mama who's lived with houselessness and poverty for much of her life and who resists through her multi-generational soul and through the work of all of our support, Vivian Hain. Oh, boy. <laughs> you wouldn't be housing if all the was here. Good evening, everybody. Just want to say big ups and thanks to everybody that's here tonight. And, you know, this is dedicated to our elders, because without our elders, we wouldn't even be here, you know. And I always tell people that, you know, we got to put enough respect out there. Um, it's also dedicated to someone very special in my life who's come into my life. Uh, his name's Thomas. And he's got to go see his 90-year-old grandmother this Thursday, who's lived through both World War I and World War II. He lives in Norway. And he's going to be coming to join me in January. But, you know, he has enough respect for his elders. And, you know, I love it when people really connect with the elders because their history tells a lot about our history, our birth stories, and such. So I'm going to read you a quick poem and then a quick story, a little bit about mi abuela, my grandmother, who was born and raised here in San Francisco, born in 1920, lived her entire life in the Mission District, and lived in a lot of poverty. Um, the, the poem that I'm going to start off with uh, before I tell you the story is called Missing. And this is sort of how, you know, a lot of us feel, like in this country and other countries, about our past and some things about our lives, especially when we deal with a lot of complex issues around poverty and adversity. It's called Missing. Missing. Missing leads to what I cannot grasp. Unknown trails that lead to my past. Where voices were silenced. Quiet spirits with screams not heard. Encapsulated in time, hidden deep, in a catacomb, hidden, missing. Okay, I'm gonna read a little story. This is a, um, a little history about my mother and my grandmother. And it's actually adapted from our play, Welfare Queens, and it's the part that I do in the play. And I'm honoring my grandmother and my mother's life experience. Uh, this is just a little piece from that, and it's called That's How It Was Back Then. In the 1940s and 50s, life in the USA was not always what the mainstream media had portrayed it to be. The image of the nuclear two-parent leave-it-to-beaver middle-class family living in a suburban stucco kingdom where the grass grows even. For many low-income families, their social and personal struggle was simply put high on the shelf full of convoluted lies and hidden truths, tightly locked up inside of a cover of deep secrecy and shame. Yet for me, I was able to have the privilege of looking into that locked cupboard through my own mother's recollection of her past. My mother told me that in 1950, on a cool San Francisco morning, two smart-dressed and stiff-faced social workers had made an unexpected visit to their home. Mi abuela, Mother of four boys and two girls had become prey for the U.S. government social welfare system because she was a working, poor, single mother with children. My mother, being the third oldest of the six ch children, knew enough at the age of eight that something was wrong. Why these strange people were standing in the doorway of their home, an old dilapidated one-room boarding hotel in the lower downtown of San Francisco's Tenderloin District. For my mother, there was nothing unusual about living in a hotel, for they had struggled many times before as a two-parent family, living in and out of cheap, run-down old flats throughout the city. Even during those years as a two-parent family, my mom remembers money always being especially difficult for mi abuela, a small Latina woman. And yes, back then it was, a time when secrets were tightly stored and sealed, lost in the wind of time a blown silence that dissolved itself into the sky, where adverse social issues and family hardship was kept a dark secret deep inside for many poor women like mi abuela, as the American nightmare had cast its shadow upon her, one that would take, her, take away the very life force that kept her trying, hoping, doing, and surviving when those two social workers took her children away. <laughs> 